Hello everybody. Good morning to our Sunday morning service. We're back out here in the pumpkin patch again. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about growing in faith. People all um, are in different stages of their faith, at different stages of their walk with God, and all of those kinds of things. And uh, for an example, one of the things that we're going to show you here is I'm going to show you this pumpkin right here. If you look down at this pumpkin, you can see that it's still green. It's got some yellow on it and all of those. Well, it's still in the stages of growth. It's not quite a mature pumpkin yet, but it's on its way. But if you walk down here just a little bit further into my pumpkin patch, you will find one that is almost completely ripe. You can see how it's done turned yellow and it's almost ready to be picked right now. So it's a mature pumpkin. And that mature pumpkin's gonna grow uh, and it's gonna yield what we're looking for. See, the other pumpkin isn't quite there yet, but it's getting there, right? Right. So that's what we're gonna talk about is in our lifetime, there are Christians who are newly saved Christians and they're like that little bud and they're starting to bloom out and they're, they're that, like that little bitty tiny pumpkin about that big around. Both of these pumpkins started off as li they, they were tiny little things. I'm talking maybe the size of a marble when I first found them. And um, as they began to get nurtured and they began to grow and they began to mature, the pumpkins began to change colors. They began to get bigger and bigger and bigger as they grew. And eventually, just like the big one that you just looked at back in the back there, it matured into what is now usable. See, God uses us in every stage of our walk of life, every stage of our walk of Christianity. You can be used from the very beginning. See, God used those little pumpkins to help develop me. Because I would have to come out and nurture, make sure no bugs, make sure no things like that or anything of that nature was going on with these with these pumpkins. So I, I, I came out and nurtured them and tilled them. And God has developed me over the years. He developed me to be a pastor. And as a pastor, I, I nurture our flock. I nurture people. And I help them grow in Christ. And um, this morning, if you wanna go with me, we're going to go over to, um, let me get my little tab to work right for me here. The wind's blowing a little bit. If you want to go over with me to 1 Peter chapter 2. In 1 Peter chapter 2, we're going to read the first couple of verses here. And, and I want you to follow along with me as we read this. That's 1 Peter chapter 2, starting at verse 1. It says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and all hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow uh, thereby, and be, be so, if so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. So what I, I, I want to talk to you about is, if you're a born again believer, you're one of those newborn born again believers. You're gonna grow if, if you'll grow with the word of God. I know we talked about this the other day, but God brought me back to this and this is one of the things. Faith grows by hearing the word of God. See, God told us to get into his word, just like these babes, uh, these newborn Christians that he was talking about here, desire the milk of the Lord. Uh, Paul goes on to say, you know, we should go from the milk to the meat of the word. So we progress and we grow in God, right? Just like the pumpkins we looked at over here in my pumpkin patch, some were at some level, the others were at another level. Some, I, I've got some uh, new, new ones that are just little bitty tiny, itty bitty tiny pumpkins that are coming out right now. And, and they are at that infant stage of, of being a pumpkin and all of that. So Christians are kind of like that. They're, they're, they're attached to the vine and they begin to grow in God, but they have to start off as that small little uh, pumpkin so they need to be nurtured more. 
and they need to be they need to grow in God. So the newborn Christian is like a babe in God. He needs the milk of God so he can begin to grow strong and grow up. And uh, the thing about it is, though, is you don't stay a babe in God if you're a born again believer. If you're a true Christian, a born again believer will grow in God. See, that's what he said there. He said, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow. That's right. You don't stay stagnant in that. You grow in that. Now, God is a wonderful and a awesome, awesome God. He is the God that takes care of us. He is the God that does everything, and all we have to do is rest in him but he desires that his children grow in the word. So if you're going to grow in God, you've got to get into the holy word of God. Amen? All right. Now, um, I want to go down here and I want to read to, uh, unto you, read to you some stuff that God also was talking about. In uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, and I'm going to start at verse 3, it says, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is as it, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth, so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. Now, see, this is the thing. Just like these little pumpkins back here, that are just growing. Uh, when the heat got really hot uh, a few weeks back, I had some of the small little pumpkins, they just withered up. They couldn't handle the heat. They couldn't handle the tribulation that was going on. Even though I nurtured them, even though I was, I was pouring into them, they decided they didn't want to grow anymore. This is what we as the born again believers, we can give to everyone the word of God. They'll grow when they choose to have faith that God's made them a pumpkin. God's made them a Christian. See, some people, they, they, they get to that infant stage. Maybe they don't have the desire. They wanted to get saved, but they don't have the desire to keep going. That's a sad day. But what we can do is we can do our best as born-again believers. If you're a brand-new Christian and you're a born-again believer, guess what? There's going to be tribulations that come, but you can grow through it. If you'll grow through it and you'll stay faithful in the Word, God said the Word, hearing the Word grows your faith. Reading and praying grows your faith. I know we're all given a measure of faith, but I believe we can grow in faith. I believe that if we stay in God's word, our faith in his word, our faith in him will cause us to grow more and more. And as we grow, we mature in God. And as we mature in God, we mature in the grace of God. And you know what? The grace of God, we understand that we have favor. Now, I'm going to take you over here to, uh, I believe it is 2 Peter. Second Peter verses 18, uh, chapter 3 and verse 18. All right, we'll start at 17. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things, there before, these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Now, I love how that, that uh, he talks about in the very first part. Don't get caught up in errors. Don't get caught up in, in, in a lot of these crazy things that the world throws out there and they call it Christianity. Um, the only true Christianity is that you have to be saved through the grace of God. You have to be saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. And you have to believe that he died on the cross. And that only through his blood can you get to heaven. The gospel says Jesus, as he grew, he taught the good news. The good news was repent, be saved, because the kingdom of God is at hand. That's biblical. Now, if someone tells you there's another way to get to heaven, they're wrong. If someone tells you that you can get to heaven without repenting of your sins, that's wrong. 
the right thing is Jesus died for us, that we could have abundant life, that we could grow in grace, we could grow in the faith and favor of God. See, in this verse in, in uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse, verse uh, 18, it says, but grow in grace and knowledge. <clears throat> the word grace there, as I looked it up in the original Greek, means to grow in the favor of God. It means to grow in his favor, and not only did it uh, mean to grow in God's favor, it also meant that you will grow in the truth. So you know what? And you will, as you grow in God's favor, you will grow to be a grateful person. That's right. See, when we grow in God's favor, we become a gracious person. We become a person filled with grace, and we then pass that grace along to others. We show them a gratitude attitude, amen? And that's how you can grow. If you are going through something horrible right now, show a gracious attitude that God has got you. Show the people around you that you're growing in God or you're matured in God or maturing. We never get to a full maturity point until we step foot into heaven. But uh, you're growing in that grace. You're growing in the faith and you're knowing that God has got everything under control. But you know what? When we get into our word, when we begin to read the word, when we begin to not just read the words on the page, but we read and study the word of God and we bury it in here, Holy Spirit will guide us. Holy Spirit will teach us. The Bible tells us that the Spirit will teach us. And our faith will grow because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's scripture right there. So if you're hearing the word of God, you're reading the word of God, and you're not just reading words, but you're actually studying the Word of God, then you are going to grow. And as you grow, you will mature just like the pumpkins here have matured. One of them is about ready to, uh, to be picked, and the other one's almost there, but he's not quite ready yet, but he's maturing. See, God matures us. God takes us down a path and a walkway. Everything in life is not just happenstance. God takes and he directs our path. The Bible says that God directs the paths uh, of the righteous man. So you know what? If God is directing us and we follow his direction, we'll go down paths that will mature us. We'll go down paths that will take us to a higher level. We'll go in faith to faith to faith to faith. We'll grow uh, in levels. Because when I was first saved years ago, man, I was all about just salvation. And I was telling everybody about salvation, didn't know the word, which that's great, that's wonderful, nothing wrong with that. We still need to tell everybody that because the basics are the best. But I didn't know that I could have favor in God. I did not know that, that I could develop a, a prayer language. I did not know that I could be baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I did not know the, all the promises that by his stripes I am healed. I did not know all of those things. Uh, even growing up in a good Christian home and a wonderful uh, Christian church we grew up in there uh, and, and the pastors we've had in our life, I did not know that because I did not have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ and I did not mature in God like I needed to. I was still staying that little bitty pumpkin drinking that little bitty milk but as I got into my word as I got challenged in my faith I didn't wither I said wait a minute I know God's better than that and I began to get into my word I began to read my word I began to seek out the things that God has for me and by doing so I broke into the next level I know a lot of people are saying oh brother Tim there's just one level you get saved and you go on now there's levels in God that you can you can move into and, and there's you can grow in the knowledge. That's what the Bible just said, right? In 2 Peter, it said, but grow in grace and in knowledge. Wow. Grow in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now see, that's the thing. It's now up to us to grow in his knowledge. 
It is up to us to begin to develop ourselves through the power of the Holy Spirit. As the Spirit teaches us, we should develop into more mature Christians. And no, that is not meaning we're going to grow up and you're going to get a white beard, you're going to sit on a mountaintop and cross your legs and go hum diddly hum diddly do. No, that means when you grow as a Christian, you also grow in the gracious attitude because there are other Christians who aren't where you're at. And if you're one of those brow beaten, beats you over the head, you don't know this yet, there are 80 year old baby Christians but there's also 30 year old mature Christians. And we have got to show the graciousness and the love and the compassion to them because they don't know. That's where we come in. God gave us the fivefold ministries, preachers, teachers, apostles, and so on. And the part that I'm trying to throw at you right there is teachers. We have to teach the young. When you had a baby, or if you've ever had a baby or had a child, they don't know how to eat. They, they, they don't know how to walk. They don't know how to put their own clothes on. None of these things. So they have to mature. So as a mature Christian, our job is to help develop the younger Christians. Not browbeat them with the Word of God, but nurture them and feed them the Word of God that they grow up in God. Amen? Because that's the kind of God we have. If God just was like, okay, you got saved, but you know what? You screw up all the time. I don't need you anymore. Throw me away. No, that ain't what Jesus did on the cross. Jesus on the cross gave us unmerited favor. That if we called on his name, we could be saved. Now, if you choose to walk away from the Lord, that's a different story. But I'm trying to tell you that God has favor on the Christian. You have favor not only for salvation, but you have favor for prosperity. You have favor in God for healing. You have favor in God for salvation. You have favor in God for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You have favor from God. If you grow in His grace, that means His graciousness, you grow in Him and you learn from Him, you will go to another level. Now, I'm going to tell on myself a little bit. When I was a newborn Christian, and I know I'm not trying to be any prophecy preacher pulling for money or nothing like that, but this is a great example. When I was a new Christian, I didn't tithe. I'm serious. As a newborn Christian, I was actually told by another newborn Christian, oh, no, that's, that's under the law. We don't tithe anymore. You don't give money to the church. You don't give money. You don't. You actually give your tithes to Jesus Christ. Now, again, I'm not pulling for money. I'm using this as an example. But I always was having economic trouble. So then I learned that you tithe. And I began to tithe. Because, see, tithing is not under the law. Tithing is actually uh, before the law ever happened in the order of Melchizedek. And Jesus is after the order of Melchizedek. Well, Abraham gave tithe to Melchizedek. And when you give tithes, it breaks the curse off of you. So just to throw that out there at you, study it out. Read your word. You'll know. Uh, what I'm trying to get to, though, is this is the other thing. I did not know that if I laid hands on the sick, they should recover. If I laid hands on myself, if I took Holy Communion, that it brought healing. It brought a, a newness to me. Because I didn't think you even had to take communion, really. I just thought it was something we did every Easter growing up. But you know what? God matured me into realizing that it's the meal that heals. This is what I'm talking about. When we get into God and we begin to grow in our faith, we'll, bego we'll grow in grace. Amen? And you know what? Our God is ready for you to grow. Our God is ready for you to be taken care of in every way. Because he loves you. He wants you to grow. He doesn't want you to wither away, but he wants you to grow. He wants to pour into you more and more every day so that you grow. And if you'll get into your word and you'll pray, God will mature you in ways you've never thought about. God will mature you in ways that you just don't understand. It's mind-blowing what God can do because he's that awesome and mighty God. So this morning, as we go to conclude our service this morning... I want to ask you, are you a born-again believer today? 
Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, and you earnestly want to know him as your Lord and Savior, pray this prayer. Lord God, right now I need you, and I repent of all my sins, God. 